Hello everyone, we're going to look at another Alpha Zero Stockfish 8 game, played in 2018. In this game, Alpha Zero is white, Stockfish 8 is playing black. And this game is just a brilliant demonstration of how to control your opponent. Basically, in this game, Alpha Zero nullifies black's attack and slowly grinds them like a boa constrictor. Alpha Zero is very Capovian in the way he plays this game. And if you love positional play, you're in for a very big treat. So, let's just get on with the game. Knight f3 is played by alpha 0, knight to f6 from stockfish, and we get the English with c4, and now c5. So we're into asymmetrical English, and white plays knight to c3, black plays knight to c6. And already we could be into a bit of a boring game, but we'll see what happens. g3, traditional move played by white, e5 from black, bishop g2, bishop e7, alpha 0 plays d3, trying to get the bishop out d6, castles, and h6 from black. So black's just stopping white from playing bishop to g5, and alpha 0 plays a logical move knight to e1. So unleashing this bishop on g2, and preparing moves like e4, f4, and maybe even reroute the knights to c2 perhaps, and prepare a3, b4, and rook to b1, which is what happens in a traditional English game. Stockfish played bishop to e6, so just developing a piece, and now I really like Alpha Zero's next move. They play the move f4. So what does this do? Well, it prepares f5, hitting the bishop on e6, where it'll have to move away. Quite simple, really. If queen d7 from black in this position, e4 will be played, and actually it transposes into what happened in the game. So what did happen after f4? Well, Stockfish took this pawn off, chop, and g takes f4. So Alpha Zero is still maintaining this threat of playing f5. Stockfish plays queen to d7 to stop this, and alpha 0 plays e4. So now it again prepares the move f5. But what do we notice about alpha 0's position already? Well, with the English c pawn and this nice e pawn, and the knight and the bishop, they're controlling this d5 square very well, but black is also controlling key squares against white. But it's fair to say that white has quite a lot of good control in the centre. So f5 is the big threat from alpha 0, so what does stockfish do? Well, they play the only move they can, bishop to g4. So bishop g4 attacks the queen on d1. If the queen moves to c2 or e2, then black can play knight to d4 with a tempo. So for this reason, alpha 0 plays queen to d2. And black has a lot of choices now. In the game, stockfish now castled queenside, but g5 was also an option trying to open the g-file against white's king. I think play may have continued with f5, so obviously white wouldn't take on g5, but we get into an interesting line with h5 from stockfish, and white can take on g5. If this happens, then knight takes e4, hitting the queen on g5 of the bishop, and after queen f4, knight takes c3, b takes c3, and bishop to f6 from black, get into a rather double-edged game where black's going to probably castle queenside and white still has relatively good control over the center but the flanks are rather weak but back to the game so after queen d2 stockfish now is castled queenside and alpha zero gets on with their traditional attack at the english they play rook b1 so preparing move a3 and then b4 so Stockfish counters this with their own move, bishop to h3, so hitting the bishop on g2 and preparing a kingside attack. But I just want to mention I really like Alpha Zero's play right now. So just take into account how they defend this position and just nullify black's attack. So for starters, they play king to h1, so stepping off this g file straight away. Stockfish plays rook h g8. So black's got no immediate threat, so white plays a3. And stockfish takes on g2, so swapping bishops with check. And the knight recaptures, knight takes g2. And finally black plays the move to open everything up, g5. So if white captures this, let's say takes, takes, knight to e3, black can now have a reasonable attack with g4. After knight to f5, there's g3, takes and rook h8 check, king g1 and rook h7 and this suddenly becomes rather dangerous for white because black's going to double the rooks up 
and try and infiltrate maybe with knight to d4 or knight to e5. And black can also play moves like knight to g4 and get the bishop and knight into the game. So suddenly black's attack is looking rather dangerous. But interestingly enough, alpha zero declined to take the g5 pawn. I think that was very logical. They played the move f5. So suddenly white's dominating all the white squares, which isn't too bad for black because they've got a dark squared bishop, but it does limit the scope of the d7 queen. And if white can now infiltrate with their knights, suddenly it's going to be very dangerous for black. So black continues their attack with the move g4. And again, just look how alpha zero nullifies this attack. So they start off with queen to d1. So this unleashes the bishop maybe to attack h6, but I don't think white will ever take that pawn off. Black played the move g3. Bishop f4 is an option. And after g takes h2, just play the move b4. Something similar happened in the game, but alpha zero now just played the move h3. And suddenly white's position looks rather safe because there's no way for black to progress. Stockfish continue to the move h5, but then alpha zero just develops their last piece with bishop to f4. And suddenly white has a really nice position. Stockfish continued with king to b8, trying to get the king to some safety. But now knight to e3. And after h4 from Stockfish to protect the pawn on g3 and king g2, suddenly what is black to do in this position? Alpha zero now dominates the white squares. The queen on d1 dominates most of the white squares behind this pawn chain. And this pawn chain from white just dominates the whole center. And suddenly white's pieces are in really great optimal positions, ready to jump in at any moment. This bishop on f4 is a bit of a monster as well. And in comparison, if we look at Stockfish's pieces, this rook now is blocked by its own pawn. And this bishop on e7 is rather tragic. And this d6 pawn is really weak because it's pinned against alpha zero's bishop. Rook h8 now was played by Stockfish. And I'm not really sure that Stockfish knows what to do because there's a lot of floundering going on now. Alpha zero continues, so just improves their position with knight to d5. So the point of rook h8 was to protect the knights on h5 and try and target this bishop on f4. But alpha zero is having none of that. They don't want to trade their really good bishop. They play bishop to e3, chop it back. But okay, but Stockfish now is slowly improving their own position. Bishop f6, gaining a nice square for their bishop to scope out the center. But after bishop f6, I thought white may be able to take on f6 with the knight. After knight takes f6, bishop g5 looks ridiculously strong. For instance, after queen e7, the most logical move to me looks like knight to d5. But actually, it's not as strong as I thought. This is because after knight takes d5, bishop takes queen, there's knight to e3 check. Hitting the king and the queen. After king g1 takes, bishop takes d8. Rook takes d8. Rook takes d1. It's not very easy for white to win this game. Okay, white's the exchange up. But actually, black's got a very strong knight on c6, which can jump into d5 or e5 at any point. And the position is relatively blocked and suitable for a knight in this position. So if we just go back to queen e7, actually the best move white can play is queen to d2. And this just protects the bishop on g5. And now we're threatening to play knight to d5. So white is in a really strong position. However, in the actual game, alpha zero declined to take this bishop. Instead, they played knight to b5. And this is to defend against any d4 ideas, like knight d4 or bishop to d4. I was thinking maybe black could play a6, but actually, this is a really annoying move, knight bc7. There's no way to dislodge these two knights from the center. Knight to e7 could be played, but then white just continues with b4. And after takes, takes. Again, white's just in a supreme dominant position. And there's literally no way for black to break through. This would be a very frustrating game if Stockfish was a human player. So after knight to b5, Stockfish played bishop to d4. So again, trying to trade the bishop off. Alpha zero just takes on d4 though. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4. And alpha zero just slowly improves their own position again with the move b4. And black can't take that pawn due to bishop takes d4. Stockfish plays f6. So trying to blockade the position. 
But again, Alpha Zero just improves her own position with the move A4 and starts launching these pawns up. And this pawn is now protected by the Queen. Rook H7 from Stockfish. Again, Alpha Zero just pushes another pawn. We've seen this in previous games. He just launches pawns up to attack the Black King position. Queen C6 from Stockfish. And you've got to admire Alpha Zero's patience. They just play calmly Queen to D2, protecting the A5 pawn. So Stockfish plays Rook to E8. And Alpha Zero hits the Queen with the move B5. So the Queen retreats back. And Queen C3 from Alpha Zero, just easily winning a pawn. Because this Knight now has no more squares to go to. Stockfish played Rook to D8. Alpha Zero captures on D4. Black recaptures and then Alpha Zero takes on D4. And suddenly White is now a pawn up. And also threatening to take on F6 as well. Stockfish plays queen to e8. Alpha zero could get greedy here. They could play knight takes f6. I think Stockfish's idea is to play queen h8, but actually e5 is easily really strong as well for alpha zero. The point is after d takes e5, this check, and after king a8, they can play knight to g4, and the knight protects the queen. And again, alpha zero should easily win this end game. But after queen e8, Alpha Zero doesn't get greedy, they just calmly play Rook B to E1. And this is what I mean in this game, Alpha Zero just slowly crushes their opponent. If this was a human player as Black, it would be very frustrating and disheartening. So Stockfish plays Queen to E5, and just Queen to E3. Queen B2 check, Rook to E2 blocks, and Queen A3. And now Queen to D4. And in this position, black can't take on a5 due to rook to a1, where they're going to pick up the queen. So in this position, Stockfish played rook to c8, rook to c2 from white, and queen c5. Alpha zero plays queen to c3, and rook h8 from Stockfish. I don't really think Stockfish knows what they're doing now in this position. Alpha zero again improves their own position with d4, hitting the queen. The queen is forced back. And now queen to f3. So alpha zero is just slowly pushing their pawns up. c5 is on the cards next, perhaps. For instance, if knight g7 here, I think c5 is just ridiculously strong. And c6 is coming next move. So in the actual game, Stockfish decided to play rook c7 and just give up the exchange. Alpha zero takes this, of course. And after queen takes, they play the move a6. Queen b6 was played, hitting d4, but after rook d1, queen c6 and rook to e1, Stockfish played knight to g7 and alpha zero takes on b7. And actually here Stockfish resigned the game. So why did they resign? Well, let's say queen takes b7. I think white can just play the move c5. And if d takes c5, d takes c5. It's very clear that um, White's just going to start launching these pawns up. They've even got nice checks. And if Black, let's say, takes on b5, there's moves like Queen to a3, threatening to play Rook to b2 and pin against this King. So this was an incredibly nice game played by Alpha Zero. And I think this is quite a unique game because what Alpha Zero does is just slowly grind down Black. So for instance here, Black's got a reasonable attack, but after this h3 move, which I think most players would play, but after h5, bishop f4, king v8, knight to e3, and now h4, suddenly after king g2, I know I put loads of arrows in this position, but let's say after rook h8, suddenly there's no play for black, and there's loads of play for white. So if you just top forward a few moves, it seems to be in this position that Stockfish just decides to play bishop d4. And suddenly, white's pawns are in absolutely ideal positions. And white has no problems. So again, I just think this was a really nice game to look at. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think Alpha Zero just makes chess look so simple. And it's amazing that um, white just made this look effortless and defeats such a strong engine. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game.
please drop me a like, comment or subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more chess videos in the future. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thanks again for all the support and comments. See you next time.